This is the Corinth Canal. It's a man-made waterway and the deepest canal in the world. I've just disembarked a cruise where our captain had to hand over control of the $37 million ship that I was on to a local tugboat pilot who would try to pull us through. To make things even more stressful, the canal had been closed before this for almost two years. Following a landslide, it had just reopened. I had so many questions going into this. How did people make this? Why did they bother? And perhaps most importantly, would our ship be okay? It was early in the morning when we approached the entrance to the canal. I'm not normally a morning person, but I did not want to miss this. This was definitely a once in a lifetime kind of experience. And most of the guests on this cruise were up on the top deck. We were so excited to be able to stand outside as we went through the canal. I wondered if the walls might be so close that I may be able to touch them and I enjoyed one of the mimosas that they were handing out. The captain told us that it was too windy for the drones that were planning to film our journey through the canal. I hoped that that wind wouldn't cause us any problems because you definitely don't want a ship like this blowing to the side. We had an extra special treat waiting for us too because the sister ship, Emerald Sakara, was going into the canal ahead of us. That meant that we could see how a ship of our size would fit through and I figured that if that ship got stuck, at least they would get stuck and not us. Although if that did happen, we would be faced with reversing back out of this canal and that does not bear thinking about. The canal is four miles long. I hope it goes without saying that there is a one-way system in operation in this canal. At the entrance, it looked totally fine. It looked like we were going into a canal, sure, but cruise ships go through canals all the time and normally it is just fine. 13,000 ships pass through the Panama Canal every year, but this was very different. In places, the Corinth Canal is only 25 meters wide and the walls are 79 meters high. If you were to compare that with the height of a giraffe, that's 16 average sized giraffes standing on top of each other and landslides are fairly common here. They aren't just little landslides either, they can be quite big. The last major one completely blocked the canal and it had to be closed for almost two years for repairs. They're still actually not done with the repairs, they're planning on finishing it next year. Despite the fact that we were being slowly tugged through, it didn't take us very long to enter the start of the canal. Looking up at the incredibly high walls that were getting narrower and narrower, I wondered why on earth someone would bother to build this canal. It seemed like an incredible amount of work and I thought to myself, surely there must have been an easier or a different way to do this. Looking at a map of Greece, it didn't take me very long to realise why they needed a canal and why they needed it exactly here. The alternative would be to go all the way round, which would add on almost 300 miles. There are records of people literally thousands of years ago talking about digging a canal here. Before they had the canal they used to hoist the ships out and then drag them across a stone path over and down the other side. That would never work on a ship of this size though and that definitely sounds like a lot of work. As we headed further in, the wall started to get closer and closer and I started to notice these big spiky rocks just under the water. One wrong move and the damage could have cost millions to repair and I'm not exaggerating, millions. Looking up at the bridges above us, I was reminded that people do actually bungee jump off here. If anyone's brave enough to do it, it costs 80 euros. This definitely isn't one for me, but let me know if you'd be brave enough to give it a try. There is also a race that happens here once a year where people swim through the canal. Because it is so narrow in some places, they have to set everybody off in different waves, in different groups, so that everybody doesn't get bunched up in the narrow parts. The creation of the Corinth Canal did turn one side into an island, so of course there are roads that go all the way over the top. Way back thousands of years ago when this first canal was discussed, they did think that one ocean would flood the other, so that's one reason why this did take so long to be built. They were worried about flooding an ocean. Way back in 67 AD, Emperor Nero ordered 6,000 slaves to start digging this canal with just spades. Apparently they managed to dig almost a kilometre, which is incredible, but when Nero died that really kind of threw a spanner in the works and they cancelled the project. Spanner is your Britishism of the week. Here in the UK, a spanner is something that doesn't move, you move it, and a wrench is the adjustable type. They're different things, spanners and wrenches, here in the UK. You can also call people spanners if you want to. I've seen some people being absolute spanners on cruise ships in the past. 
The digging started again in 1882 and over 2,500 people worked on it, digging out the materials and using wagons to take it away. It finally opened in 1893. I decided to head down to my cabin to get a different view and I felt as though I could almost touch the rocks from my balcony. I'm sure I could have in places and I did want to, but I would have been in an awful lot of trouble if I did and rightly so. I'm so glad I got to experience this with my dad. It's one of the coolest things I've ever seen and here he is. Is my dad is holding the camera thanks very much dad it felt strangely dark down here compared to being on the top deck and also pretty silent without the engines on there wasn't really much to hear we were very lucky with the weather during our crossing but the same can't be said for the rest of our cruise i was nervous about the movement i'd feel before sailing on a yacht of this size and i was right to be to find out what happened and whether i ended up feeling seasick check out this video next